warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is the IFMI MBA Info Session 2020. I am Muhammad Arfan, your host for today. I'm an operation manager, senior manager in SKK Migas, and currently a student at IFMI Business School too. So information for this session, the participants join in this webinar will be in listen-only mode during the speaker session. Your mic will be unmute during the Q&A session. You can raise your hand in the chat pane if you want to ask during the Q&A session. So ladies and gentlemen, how are you? May we all be healthy in God's protection, especially during this challenging time. On this occasion, I will guide the IFMI MBA, MBA in position 2020. So IFMI is a unique business school started back in 1984. In the way they deliver the curriculum, it is delivered based on Harvard business case in English. This will improve students' ability to understand the situation and also encourage them for being critical with a lot of discussion during the class. This will be further explained later on. So the event will begin with a presentation on the uniqueness of the IPMI 2020 MBA by Mrs. Dr. Insinyur Firdaus Bastet, MM. She is the head of the graduate study program at faculty at IPMI Business School. And after that, there will be another presentation from IPMI alumni, Ms. Mr. Elo Zaluku, MBA, and a sharing from IFMI student, Ms. Anastasia Pradita. It is also my pleasure to welcome Prof. Aman Birakarta Kusuma as Executive Director of IFMI International Business School and former Rector of IPB. Also, Ibu Yulita Fairina Susanti, PhD, as Academic Director of IFMI International Business School. Ibu Riva Sahirsha as non-academic director of IFMI International Business School and Pak Effendi Ibnu, faculty of IFMI MBA. Thank you for spending your time with us. To start the first session, here are some information of our next presenter. Mrs. Firda completed her undergraduate education at ITB, majoring in chemical engineering. She continued his, her master of management education at ITB, industrial engineering faculty and completed her doctoral education at the University of Pajajaran, Bandung, Faculty of Economics and Business, majoring in strategic management. Her expertise is in the field of innovation and entrepreneurship, quality management, strategic management, and marketing. She works in various industries during her career, such as Chandra Astri, Weatherford International, SAI Global Australian Certification Body, Lloyd Register Quality Assurance Jakarta, Latent Contractors, Construction and Mining Project, and Capital Drilling at Mauritius. Mrs. Firda also has teaching experience at ITB School of Management and Kelantan University, Malaysia. Without further ado, I will ask Ms. Firda to begin her presentation. Your time, Bu. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Nice meeting you. I'm happy to be here to meet you all. Uh, beautiful and handsome uh, gents and ladies. So uh, I hope uh, everyone that uh, still in a fasting uh, time uh, will get uh, energized by listening to this <laughs> info session. Hopefully, yeah. So let me share my screen. Okay. Ini aja ya duduknya. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, although Arfan uh, has introduced uh, briefly, so let's talk about me first, and then it me. Yeah, me number one. <laughs> Uh, and then the background of the of uh, the business school, and then we talk about uh, the uniqueness uh, of uh, it me. Okay, uh, this is me uh, around five, uh, seven years ago when I was uh, in Kimika in uh, uh, Papua, Papua for my duty. Uh, on, on my way to Freeport for operational audit in the Glasgow side. And then uh, uh, as uh, Arfan has introduced that I'm a uh, work graduate from ITB and uh, working uh, on the same petrochemical side, Sandra, actually for 10 years. 
uh, then started my journey in career, hopping from one uh, company to another company for oil and gas uh, service, certification body, and then to civil and mining contractor. Uh, I really uh, think that my master degree helped me a lot in my career uh, because it's uh, for me to understand uh, the hard part and the soft side of the of the business uh, people and uh, technology and the business process uh, that's uh, very helpful uh, at the time uh, uh, that having my master degree after some time uh, in career then I realized that uh, those work uh, doesn't uh, doesn't make me feel complete not the material but the fulfillment the patient uh, this is not the work that i uh, i want so when i when you wake up in the morning and then you are very uh, motivated yes uh, this is uh, the job that i want in my life uh, that's not uh, then uh, i'm looking for a patient in my uh, self within myself and i think uh, i like to come back to my campus and then i finish my phd degree at not in the young age, uh, past 50. So when my uh, friend uh, of mine uh, at their uh, professoriat and start to pension, I just begin with my career in academics. But that's a uh, challenge for me yeah, to come back to academic and then teach in a university that uh, I realized that that is my passion. Okay, uh, the journey in my finding purpose in life was uh, inspired by a Japanese philosophy called Ikigai to find the purpose in your life. Yeah? Uh, what Ikigai said that uh, what you love, uh, Ikigai is a middle so it's the intersection of many uh, things, what you love, what the world needs from you, what you can be paid off, and what you are good at. That's all easy guy. If you have uh, what uh, the said it here that you are lucky person, yeah, easy guy. Okay, so for me, uh, being a faculty member in campus, and also still doing my uh, expertise in business process is uh, really uh, fulfill and finding my my way, uh, finding my happiness. And it's called uh, Ikigai. My guru. So I want to start uh, with my guru, uh, one of my inspiring guru. Uh, there's a saying said that better said, uh, better than a thousand days of religious study is one day with a great teacher. Uh, this is my guru from uh, my young age, and uh, he is now 83, Professor Sasunadi Sasmoria, the one that I admire. Uh, he's a professor in chemical engineering, but also in the depth knowledge or understanding of business and uh, economics. He is now still uh, supporting me on doing this, doing that, on why don't you do that? So one of my favorite guru. Is Pasas. Another guru is you familiar with this person is Michael Porter. Michael Porter is in every book in strategy management, in every citation, in every article. He actually uh, teaches in a medical school, the School of Public Health, the Kennedy School of Government, and the Business School. And he said it's the best part because most of my work courses boundary. So the business school was his uh, favorite part. He was one or twice uh, coming to Indonesia to see uh, President SBY to give uh, his strategic advice on the nation based on his theory uh, competitive advantage of the nation. Yeah. So if you're familiar with this on your uh, Book of strategy book, so the determinant of national competitive advantage. And then uh, that was on 1980, in early, early state of uh, strategic management. 
But then uh, after some time, after 20 and 30 years, uh, that theory uh, has been outsmarted by Rita Gunther Medgar. It said that uh, when he's uh, building that theory, the situation is not like this uh, in the night today, when all the competitors are very intense and the technology is so very uh, intense uh, with uh, will change the, the map of these uh, competitive uh, advantage. You don't have a competitive advantage for a long time anymore. Then he said that's only transient competitive advantage. So uh, he criticized um, many of uh, the theory because we are now not in the normal situation. Yeah. Okay, uh, where are we now before the pandemic? We are in the industrial revolution 4.0, going to the 4.5.0. The first industrial revolution, uh, second industrial revolution, first assembly, the skin and the slaughter, and then third industrial uh, revolution when men uh, invented computer, and the fourth industrial revolution to the use of cyber physical system. It's not only that, uh, communication technology evolution uh, has emerged also from stone casting, ice age, so now we have uh, Twitter and Facebook. Also communication technology evolution evolved from uh, telephone, now we have a uh, digital environment, we have uh, AR to copy uh, copy the picture in front of you and put it uh, directly to your computer. Then also transportation technology evolution evolved from maritime, road, rail, they are moved so fast. Yeah. Also healthcare technology evolution, something the world is moving very fast and we are in the center of the world. And then uh, evolution of innovation, the theory of the theory of economic uh, saying from uh, Adam Smith and then goes to Solo and Swan. Some people, the theory of uh, economic development about innovation, then finally the Nobel laureate Paul Romero, Robert Lucas, all that uh, emerged from uh, 1800 to 2020. Okay. So where are we as a nation? In that uh, in that turbulence of change, yeah. Uh, this is a World Economic Forum uh, gives four uh, position of the nation. Uh, you it depends on the favorable driver of production and the simple structure of production. They come into four: high potential, leading, legacy, and nation. And where is Indonesia? Indonesia here on the nation with Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Cambodia. We are behind Singapore and Malaysia. Yeah. So that's why now uh, coming pandemic and we are in the crisis situation. And uh, there's a word of China's word of Mandarin called Wei Qi means crisis. Uh, it consists of two characters, which is uh, risk, consists of risk and opportunity. In every crisis, you will see risk or the danger and the opportunity, depending on where you look at. Yeah? So rich people focus on opportunity and the poor people or focus on obstacle. That's a Chinese, Chinese proverb said, I said. So some insights uh, highlight on Indonesia, if we are look at the opportunity, yeah, opportunity is uh, we are the fourth most populous country, GDP ranking 15, top highest GDP growth uh, among the 20 countries. We are rich in cultural and natural heritage, with strategic location, advantage to having demographic bonus in the next uh, 15 to 20 years when uh, a lot of young people is still in the age of productive. However, we are also facing a disruption and discontinuity. Uh, the young people now, uh, 
witnessing from a uh, change yeah, from transportation of the bluebird going to Uber and then a hotel from for season. All the financial go to FinTech, has now go to PayPal, the Como entertainment. So all that changes uh, surrounding us. Yeah, from entertainment, uh, from TV to Netflix to Hulu, and then uh, Amazon and Alibaba is still, uh, is still a giant of that. Uh, Indonesia, uh, where are we going to have prioritized five uh, sector utama? Uh, main sector that uh, choose by the government to be uh, focus in the next uh, five to ten years, which is uh, food industry, textile, uh, automotive, electronic, and chemical industry. I will uh, elaborate later that in uh, uh, last month or last week. Yeah, knowing that we are will will be focusing on that uh, industry sector, food and industry. Then uh, we also as an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with ITB to, to open a new study program of uh, food uh, management. Okay, so uh, now we are in the new normal of the business. The, the old say the stability, certainty, simplicity, clarity. We are in the comfort zone, now we are in the FUCA, Polar volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and liquidity. So it's very discomfort, yeah? it's very turbulent. For some young age people, they may uh, feel uh, discomfort as uh, Kevin Kelly gives uh, his advice and new rule for the new economy, from embrace the change, embrace the swan. Then uh, the favorite, my favorite thing is number 10, opportunity before efficiency. Look at the opportunity around you. So uh, maximize your talents uh, and then uh, think about uh, efficiency, efficiency after that. And then uh, all the crises, it says that in one uh, song, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Okay. So take away from that introduction, so be alert, do not panic, Keeping balance, short and long term. There are plenty of opportunity, it's up to you whether you go to uh, another business opportunity or you want to go to, to pursue your higher education and focus on fundamental, master your business human. So if you want to pursue a higher education, look at the business, uh, to sit uh, carefully with part of the business that I want to uh, uh, mastering. Be quick, agile, and nimble, and also uh, uh, risk uh, management. Don't put uh, two, two of your feet just to test of the water. Yeah? So if you are in the position now that you want to pursue your higher education in this turbulent time, yeah? Uh, and you're interested in IPMI, so why would you like to do your degree at IPMI? It's just like another business school, the same thing. Don't all business schools teach the same subject? So let's answer this question in the reverse order, yeah? Okay. So why IPMI? Uh, IPMI is a member of uh, International AECSB, the first business school in Indonesia with full English delivery, the first utilized Harvard case study in the region, the first delivered international MBA program in Indonesia, and international exchange student. We have uh, many students from uh, Korea, from uh, Portugal in uh, regular degree, and internship for almost a cultural experience. And business as an agent for what? Uh, benefit concept to community involvement project. Yeah. So it start with uh, a dream of uh, Bustanil Arifin and he said that I dream of, of a school that will train Indonesian managers who can perform effectively in the face of vigorous competition 
familiar with international business practices and yet yeah, remain solidly grounded in Indonesia. Uh, in uh, 1984. So along that time, over a period of time, here we are now, we have uh, three years in a row, uh, get the Ed Universal 2019, three farms award, excellent business school with reinforcing international influence. With a vision of becoming a leading business school in the country, if the international business school has achieved a number of strengths, enforced graduate business education, which includes world class international recognition by Ed Universal. That three palm uh, award is prestigious world business school ranking. Institution based in France. Uh, at Universal have for the past four consecutive, the past four consecutive years, sorry, that place it me in the highest ranked private business school in Indonesia uh, with a three palm of excellence. There are only three schools in Indonesia that achieve the three palm status, University of Indonesia, SBM ITB, and it me. Of course, uh, we are truly proud uh, of this achievement. Okay, so the excellence in education uh, that happened because uh, we supported by dedicated faculty, the striking, uh, striking alum, alum, alumnus uh, and very strong alumni and industry driven curriculum. Yeah. Okay, the first, uh, the one and only Prof. Roy Sambal been with us for many years, yeah, more than 20, 35 years of balanced work experience in business and academia, including as a writer, speaker, trainer, entrepreneur, investor. He has facilitated more than 100 training, a professor of finance, a former dean of uh, ITNI International Business School, the co-founder of uh, MBS, that's a science. Uh, his previous work experience in McKinsey, and he studied at IPB, Rotterdam School of Management, Erasmus University, the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, and he is now teaching with us in strategic management and financial uh, uh, corporate finance. Uh, first is Prof. Roy and Sambal, uh, Prof. Roy Sambal with uh, our uh, faculty. Second, uh, faculty that's supporting our uh, operation and uh, want to share with uh, young generation is Pak Rinaldi Firmansha. He was a CEO, former CEO and CFO of Telekomunikasi Indonesia TBK, managing partner is Bluebird. Uh, Fidelitas Consult, Independent Commissioner at uh, PT Indonesia Infrastructure Finance. He has a strong interest in education since a young age, uh, graduate from doctoral degree in strategic management from uh, University of Pajajaran in Bandung. Uh, his master degree in IPMI, uh, International Business School, uh, graduate uh, from uh, 1988 and uh, graduate work from ITB as uh, electrical engineering. Next, uh, our faculty uh, that we are proud of is uh, Dr. Haris Durino. Haris, uh, extensive experience as managing director, familiar with several industry. He managed Algomas Prima, so it's a balance between a business and academia. Uh, Pahar is now uh, teaching global value chain and also strategic uh, management. He received his doctoral degree from uh, Indonesian University, majoring in strategic management. His MM from Prasetya Mulya, majoring in international management. Also, double master degree from uh, UI, majoring police administration. He is now also a student of a bachelor degree for law in University Bayangkara. So from cradle to grave, never uh, 
never stop learning. Ya. Next is our faculty, uh, Pak Hutomo Lembito, is currently president director of United States Total Support. His uh, his expertise in supply chain management. He's a president director of in, uh, uh, some uh, Ugra Charaka, if I'm not mistaken, and he received regular uh, agriculture engineering from IPB. He earned master degree MBA working for various companies. So uh, we have total 20, 20 faculty. If every faculty has experience, long experience, uh, 30 years, so we have 20 times 30, you have uh, we did teach by six, three years of experience of our faculty. It's already, that's uh, our strength. Yeah. We also have uh, striking alumni, uh, Bapak Eko Putro Sanjoyo, former Minister of Villages Development of the Assented Area and Translocation. We also have Pak Henry Satriago, as the CEO of the Indonesia. He also teaching uh, strategic management for executive class on Saturday. Uh, and we also have Budianto, country general manager of Lenovo Indonesia, and uh, Iwan Ho, the CEO at SFB uh, Indonesia. We are very uh, proud of that uh, alumni and still have uh, strong networking with them. Yeah. Also, we have Cynthia Fagranti, CFO of uh, Lautan Luas, and Muhammad Hanif. Yeah, they're very uh, proud of us. They, they said uh, case study method that we use is very insightful and able to trigger the way uh, that student, uh, the way of thinking, and provide solution and recommendation. Uh, also, another word of trust from Pak Putro, uh, Pak Eko Putro Sanjoyo. He said that the beauty of uh, IPMI curriculum is the case study. It may give me a lesson on how to work a lot of under pressure and to get things done. Yeah. And also, Pak Budianto said uh, in his word that IPMI will bring your leadership capacity to the next level. You'll be prepared to go to the critical transition in your career to senior leadership role. So if you're in the transition of you're just entering in a business, uh, then uh, it may be bring leadership capacity to your next level. Okay. Uh, on the other part, uh, about the cooperation with uh, other university that uh, IPB University and International Business School also agreed to establish cooperation in the fields of education, research, and community service. Just last month, uh, this collaboration was stated in a memorandum of understanding signed by Prof. Uh, Ari, uh, director of IPB, together with Prof. Aman, so the head of uh, uh, IPMI school, which was witnessed by a number of IPB and IPMI university. So this gives you uh, a figure that how we also make a collaboration with uh, the best university in this country. Yeah, not only in uh, domestic, we also make a joint degree. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, open this uh, September 2020 for first intake, but because of this uh, pandemic COVID-19, we agreed to to make it in next year to 2020, or either March or September. We have a memorandum of understanding signed between uh, IPMI and Manchester Metropolitan University. Yeah, so joint degree, uh, first semester and second semester will be uh, in IPMI and uh, oh, first and fourth semester will be in IPMI, then second and third semester will be uh, still in Indonesia, but you will have an online teaching from Manchester Metropolitan University. 
So a part of that, we also have a guest lecture coming. Uh, it's from uh, Pak Agus Budiono, Professor Agus Budiono. He's graduate from uh, MIT uh, for degrees of in aeronautics and astronautics. And since he uh, very uh, his expertise in in the technopreneur and also uh, innovation, then we we yeah, are very lucky to have them uh, to teach our students on how to uh, to get through the the valley of the dead on the innovation uh, theory. Then, uh, just uh, last two weeks, I think, yeah, uh, the class of Arfan also enjoyed their teaching uh, of uh, lesson learned from. MIT with Professor Agus Pudiano, PhD. Another activity that we had is a power talk from uh, Diplomacy into Digital Economy by Pak Peter Gonta. And then we have Pak Renal Kasali on April. Then uh, after that, uh, Pak Ilham Akbar uh, Habibi is also give us uh, the management skill to support the nation development. So. Uh, what uh, his expectation is how to shape shaping the nation. So if you are an IPMI, so we also want you to to think about uh, shaping the nation, so building culture of innovation. Uh, also in January uh, this last year with Water Fun Work. So many activity that uh, we provide for our students in the power talk a guest lecture and our prime uh, valuable faculty. And that also supported by our curriculum. The curriculum is uh, we grouping into four group entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, below the that level is leadership, marketing, sales, and town management. Uh, contemporary business contact, international business law, corporate governance, accounting, and finance. So when I was graduate from ITB, I, uh, I don't have any idea how to uh, calculate accounting and finance. Uh, then uh, with my master degree, now uh, I understand what is the uh, profit and loss statement, balance sheet uh, would be no problem for me. Then global readiness. Managing business in digital economy era, global value chain, business simulation, and also the favorite uh, part is uh, strategic management. So by choosing this program of study, you will be setting yourself up for success. You will have the option to choose a pathway in areas such as project management and strategic management to ensure you de develop the critical skill needed to take your business to the next level. So harness your talent, expand your knowledge, and become the type of leader who convinces people what was of your vision. So be the change you want to see. Yeah, even though we are in the crisis, uh, still look at the opportunity. So since 12th of March, uh, all faculty have been delivering online lectures. Once the borders open, then we will deliver face-to-face -face class at our not. <laughs> Kalibata campus. Yeah. So reserve your place for upcoming intakes by applying today. So find your ikigai, your reason to get up in the morning. What is that? What do you want to do with your life? Uh, if you want to uh, pursue higher education, so choose it carefully uh, for Indonesia, so shaping the future of the nation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I can be read in Twitter, LinkedIn, in my email, and you can also WhatsApp me. So, Cendrawasi Burung Dara, dulu cari di Papua. Sekian, terima kasih. Semoga bermanfaat untuk semua. Arfan, uh, you, get back to you. Okay. Thank you, Bu Firda. I think that's very brief explanations of what it means. And I think, yeah, 
the students can learn a lot about IPMI from your explanation. I give you extra time actually because it's interesting to know more about IPMI from your presentation. And then before we continue, there will be some information for the uh, next student. So before the next session, this is some additional information that the participant will get 50% admission fee plus discount. And then later on, there will be a quiz from our faculty. Best answer will get a golden ticket by ITMI, and you can use it as a free admission fee test for free one time in class. And then for Intech September 2020, it will only be done with interview with two of, of ITMI faculty. And then get an early bird discount 50%, 15% of your tuition, one five for those who register and doing the test maximum at June 2020. And then for further info, you can contact our recruitment team. Okay, next, we will have a sharing for one of ISME alumni and also his professional experience. The next presenter is Mr. Eloy Zaluku. Eloy Zaluku, known as a founder and master teacher of Theocentric Motivation and Leadership is an NLP licensed practitioner, a sales training expert, STEAM alignment facilitator, leadership coach, and organizational culture, organizational culture consultant. He earned his bachelor degree in marketing and management from Deakin University, Melbourne, Australia in 2001, then completed his MBA program at Me International Business School, with dissertation topic of improving organizational performance using balance scorecard. So he was previously worked at a marketing research and consultant firm, but in 2005, he began his career as a speaker. He managed to write three national best-selling books titled Life Success Principles and the Other, and his life story has been covered by various media. So without further ado, I will give the time for Mr. Eloy Zalogo. You have 20 minutes left. Please. Thank you, Parfan. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu, hello, with Elo here. Thank you so very much. I would like to share some of my slides. So if we can uh, have it here. Hang on. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to share my slide. All right. Can you see it? No. Uh, no? Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I cannot see. Is it there yet? It's Can we see it? Well. Almost. No? Almost. Almost. <laughs> it's a blank. 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 I cannot see. This one also? Not yet. Oh, okay. All right. Let me try once again, once more. Is it? Here. Is it there yet? <laughs> Can you see? I cannot see. All right. It's dark yet. or a white screen. All right. All right. So um, we'll figure out how to do it later on. Bapak dan Ibu, um, Prof. Aman, thank you so much for the opportunity. Ibu Firda, Dadita, Pak Arfan. Also, I, uh, with Pak uh, Effendi Ibnu, thank you, Bapak, Ibu Rifat. Yes, I did my MBA um, at my business school. And if I can share my experience, the one reasons. Uh, 
I joined IBME was about for case studies. But actually, if I can put on, I, let me try once again, because I, will, I want to show some pictures. But again, can you see? Can see. Cannot? Cannot. All right. Not yet. But Could I can share the screen. Uh, uh, put the share screen, the green button. Yes, I just, I, I, I just did. Um, yeah. All right. It's your first challenge, Eli. Exactly, exactly, yes. We can do this. I, 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 saw, I see you. <laughs> you see me? What about this one? Can you see my slide now? Not yet. What we can <laughs> see is the wider screen of you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay, we'll okay. see you in the bigger version. <laughs> okay. Let me go back. Um, all right. So, Bapa dan Ibu, um, ladies and gentlemen, I think what I was about to say, it, it me, helped me so much um, to find my ikigai, just like what they have been listening. Um, I was born in Nias Island 44, 43 years ago. And our village right now, we still don't have the electricity. What I'm trying to say is that's what it, it me helped me to become. Um, I am the youngest of 16. And the first time I saw a car was in 80, 1987. I was born 1977. Um, and the first time I came out of the village was 1987. Now, the reason why I share about the, my background is that's what IPMI helped me to become. At IPMI, I learned to, be, to become a thought leader. Um, I, I once read a um, quote by Howard Thurman. And the quote goes like this, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs are people who have come alive. And I think that's what it me helped me to become. I come alive, meeting some of our beloved professors, our lecturers, and of course, meeting some other students uh, helped me to realize my potential, helped me to become, as I say, a thought leader. And at IPMI, I become more confident. And that's why after a few years, I founded what I call Theocentric Motivation and Leadership. If you go to Google and you search for theocentric motivation and leadership, you only found one. And that founded by one of the IPMI alumni. What I'm saying is, yes, there are so many schools out there, but at IPMI, I learned through case studies and also through the help of our professors and our lecturers, for me to become more confident and that's, that's um, I think that's what I learned most when I was at IPMI. So case study helped me a lot. Uh, discussion and of course, um, improving my English. Now, Bapak dan Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, I think if I can conclude, Another thing that I learned from IPMI is um, what I, I once read from Neil Dorsey and Lindsay McGregor. These people used to work for McKinsey Company. 
And um, they did a research to find out if, if you want to become a great leader, thought leader that the world is so in need right now. Actually, uh, you have to ask your source of motivation. Now, the source of motivation, they say, is uh, divided into, as we all know, extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. Again, I'm sorry that you, can see, you cannot see my slide because um, it's on the slide. When they say that indirect motivations are or, or ex extrinsic motivation um, is about external forces, when, you do what, when we do what we do because economic pressure, we want to get more money. And of course, some people consider to continue to take their MBAs because they know after those, uh, how do you say that? Uh, a lot of work to do, assignments, but at the end of the day, we know it's worth the effort because the market will value us more. And we know that because the market will pay us more. But I learned that it, is, it, it should not be the first reason why we continue our study, including MBA program. Or maybe emotional pressures, meaning pride, especially for people um, that consider taking MBAs is the, is the one thing when you have the title MM or MBA after your name is something, something to be proud of, yes. Neil Doshi and Lindsay McGregor says nothing wrong with that, but still it is indirect motives. Still it is external forces. They suggest, and I believe so, and I learned this also from IPMI Business School, we should focus on the direct motives or extrinsic motives. And they say there are three P's. First P is potential. Second P is purpose. And third P is play. So potential, purpose, and play. Now, again, I learned that for, from IPMI Business School. I discover my potential. I even discover more about my purpose. Purpose is about reasons of doing things. If you read one of the best uh, written books by Simon Sinek, the title is Start With Why. And he said, it is about the reason why you do things. So of course, Bapa dan Ibu, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, when you consider to take your MM or MBA programs, I also suggest that you consider the why factor. Why are we doing this? And then once we discover the purpose, we will end up with the third P, play. When we do what we do, yes, we want the money, Yes, we want the pride, but it is not the first reason. First and most reasons is because we found our potential. We want to deliver our potential to the market. We want to give more value. We want to deliver more value and we want to fulfill our purpose. Now, what is purpose? Uh, for me, it's very simple. In my room now, there is some stuff here. Chair, serving a purpose. Um, my smartphone serving a purpose for communications. My vehicles, cars, motorbikes serving a purpose for transport, trans transportation. Now the question is what about us? What is the purpose of a man or a woman? Of course, to make a better world, to serve and care for other people. And again, I I'm thankful because I have the opportunity to, to contemplate and to think more about this when I was studying at IPMI. Through, again, case studies, discussion from friends, with friends, and there when I found more about my identity. So I, I hope what I've been sharing to you all will help you to consider um, Yes, it is a good 
a good thing to go on to move on to another stage of your education, MM, MBA program. And yes, I learned a lot from IPMI through case study, through uh, discussions with many other fellow students. And um, the conclusion is, I think, there where you learned to become a thought leader as it has helped me. And um, the world need us, my friend. It is, we see the world right now um, with crisis of leadership. And I really believe learning um, at IPMI, especially when you meet some other students, discussion, discussion, discussions will help you and will take you to that, uh, to that, um, to that destinations of becoming a thought leader. And second, as I conclude my, um, my sharing session with you as the, one of the alumni of IPMI is um, always ask the why factor, the reasons I'm doing this. Because even if you join another school uh, other than IPMI, before you find that why factor, it will, it will not help you uh, to become the best of yourself. So purpose is very important. Reason why is very important. Once you find the reason why you do what you do, why you continue your study, not because of the economic pressure, the money, not because of the emotional pressure, the pride, but more on the four piece, discover your potential more so you can serve the world more. And then you discover the purpose. And the purpose is to give and to add value to the world. And when you do that, when the potential and the purpose come together, there where we find patience. Patience is about playing, meaning the work itself will give you satisfaction. And so that's what I do in the past 15 years. Bapa dan Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, sharing all around Indonesia, um, through training, coaching and consulting, motivation on leadership, on sales, organizational culture, and writing books. I hope, again, my experience at IPMI that I've been sharing to you will give you uh, a strong reason to consider IPMI as your next station to pursue your further degree again as IPMI has helped me through our professors, our lecturers, our le lecturers, and our friends. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Bapak dan Ibu, as I conclude and I, I summarize my sharing from Howard Truman, don't ask what the world needs. Jangan bertanya dunia membutuhkan apa. Ask what makes you come alive. Tanyakan apa yang membangunkan ibu bapak di pagi hari dengan semangat and go do that lakukanlah itu why because the world needs the people who have come alive karena dunia membutuhkan orang-orang yang bangun pagi penuh semangat mengerjakan pekerjaannya dengan sebaik-baiknya dan ibmi menolong saya untuk menemukan patient, menemukan hal-hal yang help me to come alive. And I believe so. When you go to IPMI, you will get what I've just sharing to you. But again, Bapak dan Ibu, discover your purpose. Discover the reason why you are doing this. Not for the money and not for the fame. That will come, that, that those two will come after you and I find the potential, find the purpose, work with playing, enjoying whatever you do. It's very important because, of course, wherever you study, a lot of assignment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> of course, especially for you who work full time. I've been there with assignments. Case studies, but it's, again, 
worth the effort. Indonesia, need you and me. We are facing challenges right now and more challenges is coming up. We are here at this time at the moment to do whatever we can, helping each other and let's fulfill our purpose. So thank you very much, Ibu dan Bapa. I hope again uh, it encourage you, and it will help. It help you to uh, consider sure. to meet some of these professors and lecturers. I'll, I hope I'll see you one day at campus. I go back to you, Parvan. Uh, thank you, again, Eloy. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot for your uh, sharing some stories that you have experience in it me and in your life as well i think you deserve some applause thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you Ipmi. thank you okay by eloy explain us about his experience his life experience that it may help him to what he is now some keywords that he has explained before okay we will back to by eloy later on on q and a session right now we are going into our third and I think most expected speakers this year, this afternoon, yeah. <laughs> so our next uh, presenter is I call her Mbak. Mbak aja, ya. Mbak Anastasia Predita, or or we can call her Dita. Well, yes. um, she has a lot of things that she has done before, especially in the yeah, I think we, I don't know whether I've seen you before, but probably. So, yeah, I saw you from TV. <laughs> oh, 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 so, uh, Adita is a Putri mm -hmm. Indonesia Intelligentsia 2019, and also Putri Indonesia Banten 2019, and a lot of lists that I think it's too much that I can, if I read it. But then, uh, Adita finished her undergraduate degree in social science communication studies majoring in journalism from University of Indonesia and then also finished uh, her postgraduate degree in international relations international communication and business development studies at London School of Public Relations so this is your second postgraduate one yes okay it's interesting and right now she hosts celebrita pagi and celebrita siang Sahur Segar, training staff in human resources department at Trans7. She also before at Compass TV and TVRI. So I think, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have seen you before. So without further ado, I give the time for you, Dita. So Thank you, Farfan. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. And thank you also for the first and the second speakers. Very inspiring. And thank you, Pa Aman, to have me in this discussion also. And I would like to say happy fasting for anyone who are fasting right now. I wish you a jo joyful and peaceful experience during this Ramadan. And before I start it, I just want to entertain you with a short um, video about me. I hope you got inspired and uh, have a, a little um uh, have a um, motivation to have your degree during your work because it's very interesting and help you to be the best version of yourself so i need to uh, play my video here but Atna, can you help me to play the video only four minutes i hope the audio is working also so this one is taking from my YouTube channel, but it's not working, the sound. So I think the sound is not working, Baratna. Not working. So this is my activity. So because there's no sound, so I will um, explain the video. Uh, 
So this one is my activity when I was at Televisi Nasional milik pemerintah dan melanjutkan ke news channel swasta sebagai seorang news presenter. Sekarang panjang antrian tidak lagi 1 km tapi sudah mencapai 2 km. Saya Anastasia Pradita, Kompas TV, independen terpercaya. Halo, selamat siang, selamat datang di Sapa Indonesia. Siang. Terik maupun hujan. Jangan sampai membuat siang hari Anda berlalu tanpa makna. Ulang tahun ke-72 TNI digelar di Dermaga Pantai Indah Kiat, Cilegon, Banten. Isi waktu siang Anda dengan sajian informasi kaya warna dalam Sapa Indonesia Siang. Senin hingga Jumat. Dan ini salah satu program yang ku pegang, Sapa Indonesia Siang di Kompas TV. Salah satu program yang menarik karena mengangkat sisi humanis dari pemberitaan yang ada di Indonesia dan seluruh dunia. Dan di sambil kerja, aku juga menjalani kuliahku, Master of International Communication for Business Development, dan melanjutkan cita-citaku dan masa depanku dengan menjadi Putri Indonesia Banten di tahun 2019. Dua dari Provinsi Banten, Anastasia Pradita. Berikutnya, Putri Intelijensia 3 diraih oleh perwakilan dari Profit. Selain tampil di televisi sebagai seorang presenter, aku juga menekuni karir sebagai Master of Ceremony. Beberapa acara juga aku pandu menjadi seorang MC dan tentunya ini adalah hal yang menyenangkan karena bisa langsung bertemu dengan audiens ketika berada di atas panggung. Dan tak hanya itu, aku juga memiliki pengalaman lain di stasiun televisi lainnya sebagai seorang host dan juga bintang tamu. Duh cantiknya Deprili gitu ya menggunakan hijab, apalagi masuk di bulan puasa ini semakin adem gitu lihat. Tadi ada Prili, ada Wizi, pokoknya itu cewek-cewek muda yang sangat menginspirasi. Dengan panggil beliau tante, karena beliau lebih suka dipanggil Odi. Panggilan yang diberikan orang-orang tercintanya. Jadi urusannya panjang, jadi ngeliat bajunya orange itu kayak bajunya Diana gitu ya. Oh, nah, udah diterima. Bersama. Kan banyak juga kasih kayak Judika kan terima sama keluarga di mari ini. Imun. Jadi memang imunitas tubuhnya itu kan berkurang. Jadi penyakit-penyakit apapun tuh bisa menghampiri tubuhnya. Nah itu dia yang menginspirasi walaupun harus gabut di rumah. Mungkin kita udah stres banget kelamaan di rumah, gak banyak aktivitas yang bisa dilakukan. Atau mungkin That's my story in less than 4 minutes. If you want to know more about me, don't forget to follow all my social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and happy watching! Okay, that's all about me in four minutes. So that's uh, one of the video on my YouTube channel. If you want to know more or want to discuss about career, about your study, education, I really open for discussion and just contact me through my social media. So that's my uh, story. And as you know, this is my second master degree. Can you imagine I study for more than how many years? I think it's a lot of uh, years that already passed. Uh, and this one is my second master degree. I never think that I will take another uh, master before because uh, master degree is very dif uh, different with bachelor degree. Uh, in my bachelor degree, the lecture just give us all the material, the study case and everything. But in master degree, we are really need to think outside the box. So it, there is something that very fun because we meet with a lot of people from different background. The, uh, professional and then most of them have a really good experience so we can share in the class so why I uh, took another degree because I want to try something new and then meet new people and learn something and then have a bigger uh, networking and connection it's really matters for my career right now so uh, for this master degree is different from another education my background education because for my bachelor degree and my master degree before it's in communication because I really into journalism and broadcasting that's why I took my bachelor and master degree in communication especially in journalism and after graduate I focusing on my broadcast uh, ex uh, um, career and then 
after become news presenter for seven years, I began to need to a more challenge in that time, and I joined Putri Indonesia in 2019. I and I got a, a title of Putri Intelligentsia or Putri Intelligence 2019. And in that time, I got a scholarship to it me. It's a really um, big opportunity for me because it's a um, priceless present that I got from Putri Indonesia from the competition. And here I am, become the student of IPMI right now. So I really like, uh, first time I got this scholarship, I was really, I'm not sure if I can follow the material and also the study here because I have no experience in economics and I'm really bad with numbers and I really love to study communication before so I, I don't really know if I can follow the study here but uh, after one year so I got the scholarship in 2019 but I uh, took uh, the first semester in 2020 because uh, after I think and consider it's really a good opportunity to have a master in business administration because the world right now like everyone become entrepreneurship and with my background as the public speaker and also a public figure and work for tv i think this work is not last long because if i'm getting old i need to prepare for a business to be a businesswoman so i need to prepare for that and there's a really op it's a big opportunity for me to learn right now so i can prepare for my future because i know the world changes very fast and then the social media is very um big also right now so you, you can become an entrepreneur with a very uh, easy way just sell something on your social media and i have a uh, good followers on social media i think i can do that and then become an entrepreneur someday so i think um it may offer me that opportunity right now and then after one year i went to IPMI again and then i see all the facilities there is very good facilities very professional and then about the study is not as difficult as i thought before because it's based on study case so I can understand about the business and economic, although I wasn't from economic background. And the case is from Harvard uh, University, so it's really good for us. And some of the cases, it's about so Asian uh, case, so it's related to Indonesia. It's very applicable. I really like to discuss. It's about communication also, business communication, so it's still relate to my uh, recent studies. And I really like to discuss with the expert with the lectures and also with my classmates who are the backgrounds from economics so it's really fun to discuss about that and we are divided into groups so i have a partner and then we can discuss about the study there and also because this pandemic the class is moving into e-learning so i got to classes in the university in kalibata but now we are having a trouble because the pandemic and we are moved to Zoom classes right now. But it's a really fun. And then I really like it because we, we can do it anywhere, at home, at your office maybe. And then uh, it's very fun because the lectures always uh, trigger us to ask and make us very active during the classes so if we can find a way to entertain and then also teach the students uh, with all the difficulties right now so it's very good and then it's um, good because very professional lectures very experienced i really like to uh, join the talks also with a sharing session from the expert with Pak peter gonta before is very inspiring and help us to motivate more and also it's delivered in english so if you want to be someone better than now or you want you have a goals i think it will help you to get there and then what else i can say about it because it's really helped me uh, during this time because as a presenter um, i 
I'm I'm not as busy as before because we have like uh, social distancing. So my schedule right now is not tight like before. So right now during this pandemic, I can spend a lot of time to study and also have the online classes. So for you, if you're getting bored at home, I think taking MBA at ITMI is a solution for you right now. And then uh, the last, I just want to say that never stop learning anywhere, everywhere, because right now I think uh, taking MBA is another way for me to be, to help me to be the best version of myself. And I hope with ITMI, I can be an entrepreneur someday because I'll, I think it's never too late to learn and then it can help you to be someone you never know before. Maybe you can be uh, very successful with the study right now because education is really matters. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dita. Very inspiring sharing from you. I think not so many Putri Indonesia has two postgraduate degree. I think you'll be the first, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, so before the Q&A, if you have a question, I have some information again that I need to inform you that all the participants, students, or next students will get 50% admission fee test discount, all the participants in this uh, webinar. There will be a quiz from our faculty, best answer will get a golden ticket by IPMI, and you can use it for free admission fee test or free one time. Class. And then for Intech September 2020, will only be done with interview with two IPMI faculties. And then get an early bird discount 15% of your tuition. For those who register and doing the test maximum at June 2020. And further info, you can contact uh, IPMI MBA recruitment team. Uh, number four is really quite something, you know, 15% of the tuition is quite, quite a lot. Okay. Uh, I think it is time that we will open a Q&A session. I will accept the question first. And if you want to ask, please raise your hand. You know how to raise your hand, right? In the chat, anyone? Or you want to write your question and then I'll I'll give the, the question to the center. Anyone? I haven't seen any and yet. Or probably Pa Eloy or Ufirda or Madita. Okay. I have a question here from Pak Ignatius Roni Yahya. So the question is, what makes it me unique? I think we feel that you can reiterate your explanation before. We feel that, please. Okay, what makes it me unique? Uh, because uh, our delivery method is in English and uh, method of teaching also we use case study. It's not a uh, lecturing. So our uh, faculty member uh, are trained uh, to teach using case study. Yeah. So case study is not only from uh, Harvard, uh, but also local case study. By doing uh, a case study, so uh, student has a comprehensive understanding about what's going on. And then uh, it's very uh, effective uh, rather than uh, lecturer uh, lecturing in the front of student and student uh, open the book. Uh, it's about uh, communication and effectiveness. So if the learning is effective uh, and fun, then uh, student will get uh, motivated uh, to go uh, to finish the study. And also what makes uh, us unique is that uh, we formulate our curriculum based on industry, so industry-driven uh, curriculum. So, Pak Aman mungkin mau menambahkan? Invite Pak Aman. Yeah, I think it is very, very important question and I appreciate uh, you raised that question. Um, probably I 
again, I would like to appreciate the presentation from Paelo and Badita. This is truly a thing reflecting why they finally decided to choose IPNI. If you are the best student with the GPA 4.0, you can go to ITB or University of Indonesia or other university. But at IPNI, it is a different treatment to the student. I came from one of the big university, IPB. Also, we based on the you know selection the student coming based on the uh, GPA and and uh, you know the chief of the student. But at IPMI, you being being treated uh, uh, specially as a student that would like to learn something, then uh, try to prepare for you to become a, a future transformative leaders. So we are treating the each individual student as a human being. So this is very important, how to dig the, the, the potential as Pa Eloy said it. How to dig the potential that you have. How do you motivate to, to meet your purpose and to get motivated to become confident. And I think this is very important for us. And the, the environmental uh, ecosystem in the campus as such, it makes this situation is possible because I think we have a small school. We have uh, not too many students. So the student and staff ratio is still in a very good uh, you know, ratios. I think we have about 20, 30 faculty members and a student around uh, 300 to 400 students. So it is a very good mix between the uh, interaction between student and faculty members and also with the uh, uh, among the students itself. And the second one, because we are delivering in English, we would like to, to also provide the environment where the student really could feel the international flavor in the campus. So we are inviting many uh, international students coming to campus, faculty members or guest uh, speakers coming uh, to, to IPMI. And the other interesting program for MBA degree is we call it the immersion programs. So this is one of the programs where we together with either Harvard uh, students or from Melbourne Business School student, they come to, to Jakarta. So we work together with them, our student, and uh, study and visit, discuss with many, many industries in Indonesia. And they learn, uh, they learn the case from, from those uh, interaction. So this is a very enriching situation. So I think this is, this is a very unique of IPMI when I see it, because I also just uh, joined if me about a year. So I think it's very different with the traditional and conventional campus uh, available in, in the country. So hope that we can uh, add the point that Bu Firda already mentioned. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pak Aman. Bu Firda, we have second questions now. The question is, any IPMI experience now to handle millennial students and how to bridging them to stand together with the older generation at the same class. Well, I'm old enough, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, probably I can... Yeah, I can actually, it's, uh, the question is for you, Arfan. Okay. Uh, right. I have a very interesting story, actually. I'm not really young, if you know me, actually. I'm, uh, my position is quite senior in SKK Migas now. I'm uh, actually the labor union leader in... SKK Migas. And then I was a student at IPMI back in 2007. So 12 years or 13 years before, I'm already a student at IPMI. But then because of the job requirement, I have to stay in Grassburg Freeport for one year. I came back to Jakarta every three weeks. I cannot attend the class. And as you know, in IPMI, I think Bupirda, you can explain later the requirement for IPMI. It's quite tough actually. But then there is a question. Learning from this uh, online situation, I still think that it may need to consider the online classroom or online attendance for those who can meet like me before. So in 2007, I cannot pass the study because of my situation. Back in 2019, when I see there is a chance for me in terms of time, I re-register myself starting from zero again. And what I found in the class, of course, someone much younger than me. 
But then what happened? I think there is no problem in terms of communicate communication with the millennials. But it's become I think it in in a way it benefits for the millennials when you can find someone more se senior than you in the class because a lot of experience that we can share to you and I don't find any difficulties in terms of communicating with the younger one. I think that's from me. I don't see any uh, difficulties in in my uh, experience to communicate with the millennials. Yeah. Probably someone else, the faculty want to add? Bu Firda, Bu Yulita? Wita mau menambahkan. Because you, you, you have the experience, right? Uh, a lecture. <laughs> a lecture. <laughs> All right. Um, just one minute. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, um, w what should I add here? I mean, like, sorry, I, I was about preparing my class for tonight. Uh, well, um, as a faculty, right? Yes. Um, I think like I'm, I'm teaching at IBMI, it is great. I, we not only learn, uh, we're not only teaching, what we also learning a lot from the student. Um, well, uh, we don't treat student as, um, as a student, but more we treat them as our peer. So because, uh, well, especially with, uh, with some, with um, executive student, even um, MBA student that they have a lot of experience. So uh, the way we treat students in the class, right? I mean, like, uh, uh, we just get their uh, opinion, their experience, sharing in the class. So uh, as a faculty, we so have a lot of fun, right? Yeah, we're having a lot of fun, right? Yes, uh, especially when we use the case study, right? So um, we learn a lot because the students, they come from um, different background. Yeah? They're, they're coming from a, a HR, coming from... Um, IT, they're coming from other um, side of the, uh, the industry. And this makes the, the class is complete, right? Does the faculty more like facilitator? It's not, 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 not teach them, but then we facilitate the student. So yeah, that's for me. Anything else to want yeah. to add? Uh, yeah. Actually, when we have a class, we have uh, your name and your uh, working experience uh, on our teaching notes. Yeah? So we, uh, we prepare uh, what is the strategy to teach uh, the gap. And also we would like to uh, the most experienced students to also to, to embrace, to reach, to reach out the, the youngest uh, generation. So there will be no, no uh, gap between them. If we find want to add some strategy to on this on this question on about uh, how to handle millennial students yeah. Yeah. and how to bridge them to stand together with the older generation at the same class. <laughs> well, in my opinion, whether you are a millennial or you are a much older generation, we have the same um, values. We try to have you this episode. We have the same values. Have the same principles. So it would not be that different, uh, difficult on how to fill in the gap. And I, actually there's no gap at it. Me, what you try to do is actually develop to become transformational leaders, transformational leaders. And uh, I think whether you're a millennial or you're a, or a more senior citizen, it's um, we try to develop each of you and having the same values. So therefore when you go out into the real world, uh, you will have those characters. That's what we try to do is build those characters. Build those, like uh, I think Eloy was saying about uh, leadership. Uh, one of the strength of it is to have to develop, because we're not that big, not that big a school, we can easily individually develop the student. We, we try to what we call the tubo kembangkan the students. So it's not just printing students. And, and therefore, that's where we bridge between the older generation or the millennials. You know, we try to develop those the same values. And it's not actually difficult for us to do that because we are small. We are very focused on our students. As we, I would say, we facilitate. We don't lecture, but we facilitate. We pull up ideas from you. And we okay. elaborate your ideas. 
That's it, Pak. Oke, okay, thank you, Bu Riva. I think I, I will continue the next question because we have uh, so many questions right now. People are keep asking, if you don't mind. So there is a questions I will get back to you later on. There is a questions how many international international students in IPMI and do you require any English test score? I think Bu Firda. Uh, yes, internet, uh, English test score. Uh, yes, we require uh, Google and IELTS uh, before, but for this uh, pandemic situation, I think we'll, uh, we'll be more flexible and instead uh, for on uh, English. The international uh, student we have uh, on MBA degree, we have about three to five from Korea. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Buita. Hello. Yes, I got back to you later. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's three for two five uh, uh, student uh, from IDK Korea. Okay. 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 So, so I ca I can add to uh, because in my class there is a Korean and I I frequently met some Koreans too in the campus and actually in some classes I have some friends coming from France too and from Spain. They're coming from What some clubs actually. Yeah, so from Portugal. I think, yeah, from Portugal. I think the, the international environment is also exists in IPMI. Uh, next question is, many of us are working and want to get more academic knowledge from IPMI. How flexible are you? How flexible is the class? Is uh, During pandemic, yes, we have an online class called uh, Synchronous. So uh, we have a schedule for that. But uh, we also have a method for asynchronous uh, with uh, using Google Classroom or uh, using LMS. So we are 24 hours uh, open for discussion. Uh, for you can ask me uh, anything. So also so to complement the online learning and uh, the asynchronous learning. But as the pandemic over, we were thinking about uh, if we are going to have an online learning class. Maybe uh, Pak Aman would like to add about yeah. the possibility. Yes, I think it is trying also to, to see the, the development and also the trends in the world, in the business school uh, you know, disciplines. So, of course, we are very confident in offering very fundamental and uh, conventional uh, basic, you know, uh, management science or uh, business in, in our school. Uh, but the trend now, since uh, many, many uh, business develop based on also some of the, of the uh, very, uh, you know, based on the scientific and the technology approach, So those uh, literacy on the STEM is becoming very important. So you want to see the academic knowledge, maybe how that, that uh, we can use, utilize, for example, the big data or artificial intelligence or some of the information technology in order to support the decision making in, 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 the, in the business uh, process. So those kind of literacy will be embedded in the knowledge of the student Uh, in order to, to uh, again, uh, make them familiar with and they can use the tools that they can use the, the application so to make sure that the process in making the decision in terms of the strategic management or uh, human capacity or finance or marketing. Uh, so those things will be supported by the necessary uh, knowledge uh, based on the development Uh, in the in the global uh, level and also on the local needs. So maybe uh, who else can add that one? Anyone? No? That's the last answer. Okay. So the, the answer is there might be a flexibility part, yeah? But then we will see the development. Okay. There is actually someone want to share about his experience, but I think I will give it 
uh, another question first. Could somebody describe the overall cost to complete the MBA in Ibni? Ibu Riva, please. <laughs> okay, Parman. Well, we have two uh, programs, MBA program. One is the executive MBA, which is full Saturday. And then we have the regular MBA, which is held on every Tuesday and Thursday. The cost, the tuition fee for the regular MBA would be 125 million. And the executive MBA would be 150 million. But I think uh, our a recruitment team uh, has probably explained to many of you that we're now offering these early bird payments, that there will be discounts. We're also giving you, I think, golden tickets for vouchers, if I'm not mistaken, for the best questions. Um, that's the cost. Yeah, uh, that's it, uh, Arpan. Okay. I think that, uh, answering the question. And later on, you can also ask the uh, team from recruitment or you can google in the site too and then there is I want to give uh, an opportunity for pa Aldi Peraldi Lewis is a EMBA student and he wants to share his experience with it me uh, can somebody help unmute pa, pa, pa Aldi Aldi, are you? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Thank Go you ahead, for Aldi. the opportunity, Parfan. Oh. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? Yes, you are. Loud and clear, Pat. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I just want to share to, uh, with uh, our friends and guests here. Um, I was a student here, uh, uh, not, not so long ago, but a long ago. First of all, I want to uh, say that uh, learning at Eden is fun. But if I may, just like the, uh, the others uh, have said, it's not easy. So if you guys are married, uh, ask permission from your spouse. Make sure that you have their permission because the, the two years that you're going to be here is not going to be easy. Uh, and since I'm also a staff, I know what's going on uh, at IPNI right now. We are very hard at work uh, preparing what's coming, uh, what is coming, whether it's going to be a new normal or the same normal, <clears throat> uh, whatever that is. Uh, I think what you're going to get from what also we've been uh, doing in the in the what 30 almost 30 30 years um at ipni is give the best that uh, that uh, the kind of uh, education the best kind of education <clears throat> that we can you're going to be uh what we used to say globally connected because uh uh like what ibu firda has shared we've got speakers from all over the world and we have people from all kinds of background and uh, you're going to learn really uh, what's going on in the world and not just theory and not just from books but really from experienced people and that's the best kind of learning that uh, you're going to get also you will uh, get experience from uh, networking uh, with your classmates because they are, they have experience uh, that are different than yours. With uh, the case study, like uh, my other people before me has said, case study is a great way to learn. Uh, because not only will you learn from the case, but you will learn from your classmates. My class, we had 32 people. And uh, the average working experience in my class was 15 years. And you can imagine 32 times 15, that's the number of years experience that you will gain from, not just from uh, one uh, faculty, but from your whole, the, from the whole class. 
some of them will be very good at accounting. Some of them are very experienced in marketing. I've had people uh, that came from uh, uh, out of town. A lady came every Saturday from Solo. And she was uh, managing, uh, she was director of finance. We had uh, uh, a managing director uh, of a company uh, while I was uh, at IDNI. And learning from people with such diverse experience is something that you will not get out of books, you will not get from a, a, a lecturer, uh, and you will not get yourself if you were working for, uh, for uh, the kind of experience that you have. But you will get from working with other people, doing cases, doing projects. Okay, before I close the session and before I summarize, I saw there is Pak Leonard Ong here who is uh, teaching marketing. Pak, can you say something? You're the marketer. Do something, Pak. Yeah. Your uh, magic. Please welcome Pak Leonard Ong, the expert mm. in marketing and entrepreneurship okay. also. <laughs> Thank you, Pak Arfan and uh, Prof. Aman and others uh, people in these meetings. Frankly speaking, I don't know what I'm going to talk. But uh, I do really excited that we are meeting in this uh, in this uh, uh, video conference. So uh, it's going to be excited when we are going to intake for the MBA class because MBA class is going to be uh, different, different in terms of the person, different in terms of the experiences, different in terms of the ambience and everything. So. Uh, 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 getting opportunity to to learn about uh, about about uh, a class in an MBA program, I think, is, uh, is really exciting. Hence, uh, the excitement level is going to be uh, is, is is going to be the top, and then it it I think is going to be impactful our our uh, 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 not only personal development but also our knowledge development. Uh, so, if the question was about what. What is the excitement of the marketing things that, I, that I'm doing in a, in a IPNI? Marketing is not only just talking about how to sell, how to market, but uh, it's about strategy. So if we do able about the strategic, uh, strategic marketing things that we are going to learn in a MBA, in, in, a, in, a, in a specific class in an in a, in a, in a MBA school, uh, uh, I think it's going to be uh, what I'm saying is uh, not only uh, 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 valuable for for, for our uh, uh, personal development, but also it's going to be uh, getting something, getting something that I'm quite difficult to, to say what 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 this means. But uh, learning it me uh, if I. Uh, can able to to, uh, to say about examples. So we learn about the uh, about the uh, the uh, uh, as the the host said that uh, Bufir that said that uh, not only from the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, what I'm saying is uh, the the industry, but also from the classmates. So uh, the ambience from the class, I think, is uh, is going to be really important for all of us to make the absorb of knowledge, the absorb of skills, the absorb of experience. And then it's going to be uh, 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 deep in and enhancing us, sharpening us in terms of how do we able to make a decision making process. In terms of could be marketing, could be finance, could be anything that we are going to learn in a business course. That's it from, from my, my Thank uh, you. perspective. Thank you, Pa Ong. And Thank uh, you. Yeah, Bufirda, I do mention that we have a quiz, but I think the time is running short now. Do you want to have a quiz or? Yes, uh, only one short question. Okay. So, uh, Parinaldi Firmansa is uh, our lecturer, and he is a former of a CEO of Telkom. So, in what year that uh, Parinaldi uh, is a 
CEO in Telkom. Okay, the first correct answers at the chat will get the prize, right? Yes. Okay. Anyone? Okay. Just Google three, it now. Three minutes. <laughs> Google now and then put the answers in at the chat board and the right answers, the first right answers will get the prize. Okay. So can you repeat again the questions? In what year Pak Rinaldi is the CEO of Telkom? Is that the question? You are mute, Bu. <laughs> okay, I will wait for just one minute if there is no answer, so no one get the prize. Yes, in what year that Pak Rinaldi Firmansa is a CEO in uh, Telkom? Oh, 2007, is that right? Uh, yeah, 2007 uh, to 2020, okay. and then uh, again as a CEO, 2012 to 2014. Okay, the first answer, Joel, uh, is uh, good, so you can get the prize. Okay, Joel, don't forget to claim for your prize, yeah, if you... Uh, decide to register it. Okay, I think time is short now, so I will conclude this session. So we have heard a lot of uh, explanation from our faculty, from our presenter, from our alumni, from Bu Firda. Bu Firda has explained all the things about the ETI, what the five forces model, Adam Smith theory, some sharing where Indonesia now on the global economy, an interesting China's power, the wage crisis, it could be a danger or opportunity. We will see about the five-man sectors of Indonesia and new business normal, and she introduced us to a lot of great faculty in IPMI. And then Pak Eloy Zalo, El Zaluku, he shared his experience that it may help him to become what he is now. The case study helped him a lot, the discussion, and he found his theocentric motivation and leadership. And what's important about Pam Eloy is the source of motivation is the extrinsic or intrinsic. Find your intrinsic motivation. And then from Mbak Dita, Mbak Dita sharing about her experience, journalism, and then now she's taking her second postgraduate. That's interesting. I'm not really sure whether I want to do the same, but that's really a great sacrifice for your future, Mbak Dita. It's a good thing that you, you take the challenge to do your MBA up at IPMI. Well, you found, you, you think it's going to be difficult, but then you decided to continue at IPMI and you find that the class is helping you a lot. So that's a good thing. And I want to share again to you from my experience. I think I agree with Ibu Firda. You have to find your purpose. I was a student in 2007. I cannot make it due to my work has to assign me somewhere else. But then I find my own purpose back in 2019 after 12 years. And for you, if you are still young, I think you should find your purpose. And believe me, there should be a good thing coming from your investment anywhere you choose, especially at IPNI, of course, because we are in IPNI session now. So I think that's all from me, from IPNI. Thank you very much for all the faculty, for all the speakers, for Eloy, Mbak Dita. We'll see you again on the TV, Mbak. Yes. And then, Mbak <laughs> Terima Vita. kasih banyak. Uh, Terima kasih banyak. 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 Bye. Jangan lupa uh, enroll daftar sekarang masuk ke website ini ya. Yes, find your purpose. Don't, don't forget. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone. You can leave. Bye. Bye. Bye.